Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I'm in Marina Del Rey, California, and I'm at the Korea Conference 2024, and I was able to get Alina on the show for a quick interview. Alina, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Adam. All right, Alina, so we're in beautiful Marina Del Rey. We're at the Korea Conference. What are you looking forward to? I'm just looking forward, of course, to meeting like-minded people, yeah. just like, you know, while we're all here, because ultimately we all have one goal, to raise money, to make the world somehow better place through impact investing, through profit investing, for profit, not for profit, and so on. And where people collaborate, obviously, like-minded people yeah. create beautiful things happen. Amazing. And uh, I understand you're a CEO, you're an entrepreneur, I'm an advisor, many things. Maybe tell me a little bit about your background and how you got started. Sure. Well, my parents pushed me out of Eastern Europe mm. and said that I really should be finding myself elsewhere, outside mm. of the wings of my grandpas and grandmas. Were they entrepreneurs too? Was it kind of... Uh, Oh, not at all. My, my dad actually is a biologist oh, okay. and a geneticist. And my mom was at the roots of building investment banking industry in Russia, which was very, very Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I got a little bit of... It was in the you know, blood a little bit on both sides. <laughs> yeah, well, my mom had super strong influence on me, but also my dad with his love of nature yeah. and camping. So I like very fine things, mm -hmm. but I also very deeply connected with nature, which is actually, thank you so much for these questions because it just helped me realize why, <laughs> no, I'm serious, I'm having this boss. Yeah. Why I actually do what I do because I start, I wanted always to be a banker because yeah. I always wanted to be like my mom, but I had to do like an uphill mm -hmm. battle, I guess, a keto, like my son would say, <laughs> and make it, the harder, the longer route to banking. So oh. I took public accounting in uh, bachelor's. I, I went to Pace in New York. Mm -hmm. And then I studied finance for my uh, master's. Mm -hmm. But my first work, uh, job was at Credit Suisse in regulatory. And then I moved to Deloitte and Touche back mm -hmm. then. Now it's just Deloitte. So it, it's very heavily focused accounting background. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to finance through regulatory, through middle office. Mm -hmm. And so when I finally made it to the investment banking on Wall Street, it was very intuitive for me because wow. I could read prospectuses very well and I could see kind of the entire story of the company, mm -hmm. not just through the sales eyes, but yeah. it through the operations, so size, it. their risk, yeah, and accounting and for sure financial statements. But not to make this interview too. No, I love it. Tell so, me, this is great. So yeah, I left banking, investment banking in 2010 because mm -hmm. my mom moved to the States mm -hmm. and we started, actually, no, I left it in 09. I mean, we started a company, it's called White Bridge in 08, 09. Uh, so it's about 26, 27. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my goodness, 26 years ago. Am I dating myself? You're not. I'm curious about, but I want to talk, like a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of startup founders watch this. And I'm just curious, when you finally made that jump from, let's just call it corporate America, I mean, you were investment banking, you were doing a lot of entrepreneurial activities already anyway, just based on the nature of your business and knowledge. But when you finally made that jump, like, what was that like for you? It was so scary. <laughs> it it scary. was so scary. And well... For me too, by the way. For me too, by the way. And I was actually 20 weeks pregnant at a time. So, and I was in between jobs and nobody, mm. unfortunately, for, well, fortunately, actually would hire me. Yeah, in retrospect, though. In so retrospect, that, so that's a big statement that she just said. <laughs> like, sometimes we think that like. I know. It was so scary. And I wanted, like I like to say, to get back right into the revolving door. Yeah. Out of I get which it. I just got out because this is what I know. Yeah. I know sales trading. Yeah. I know how to sell companies. I know how to raise money. I just mm -hmm. let me back on my W-2. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and after first two years of yeah. struggles, really, and doing a lot of work for free, yeah. what goes around comes around oh, always. Man. And I never looked back. So 20, not 2009 through 2011 were pretty tough. Mm -hmm. And then I never looked back. But what I wanted to emphasize, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of the, the background that you asked me yeah, about, yeah. 
investment banking from nature is very, very far, but that's exactly what I'm actually doing right now. After taking companies public on our so did it go kind of, did it come kind of like full circle? I don't want to put like words in your mouth, but exactly. like I'm seeing it as like, wow. So you kind of got, you know, I just realized that. Yeah, it came full circle. So when I was taking pop companies public, we also played sometimes a role of IR, mm. investor relations. Mm-hmm. We would train the management to talk to the funds from which they want to mm-hmm. raise money because it's very important to understand the language of each fund. Yeah. What are they trying to achieve? What is their mandate? Because the investors into their fund, mm-hmm. their LPs mm-hmm. give them money for a certain purpose, right? So if you just do a blind pitch, it's yeah. very many times, right? It's just going to fall on deaf ears. Yes. So we coached management to raise money to create, you know, their investor base. And then I realized that a lot of investors are actually asking about things like culture, yeah, about things like, well, how would you? And is that a little bit of a shift? Because you've been in the business a while. So like, if we go back to the beginning, I, I, I don't, it was, was that a little bit of a shift? Profits. It's just the numbers, right? It's just the, yes, why not? And investors started asking about other risks and they have wow. thought of non-financial metrics. Wow. And uh, that's hopeful to me. Like, and that's, I mean, we want to make money. That's a given. That's a, sure. that's a given. Okay. But, a given. but the, the new consumers are smarter. Like all the things we look further down, like downstream, like that's a hopeful thing to me exactly. for the environment, especially as you were mentioning. Well, exactly. Yes. That, that's precisely right, Adam. And a lot of, especially younger investors that even have their own family offices and Europe is a little bit more ahead. I'd imagine that. I'd imagine. Yeah, they want to know that they are investing also with impact. Yep. Not only, you know, give me the hard dollars, because ultimately if we're going to damage people, damage nature, Mm -hmm. damage or somehow, you know, disrupt the climate or, you know, whatever, fertility of our... Sure you know, increase acidity of our ocean. Yeah. Somehow it's going to come back to haunt us, mm-hmm. either through, you know, shifts in weather or neighborhoods being destroyed. You'll have mm-hmm. nowhere to lend money into or sell your products. In. Yeah. So younger generations definitely prefer the balance mm-hmm. between hardcore dollars and what else can I do with it? Because I can get the profit, but it also can make an impact. And, and given, keeping in mind the great generational shift, but well, yeah. You know, it's very important to understand that. So this is what I'm actually focusing on. Combination okay. of profits and impact. Oh my gosh. I think we get, I, the listeners might be able to hear this, which is okay because I, I want to keep this in. We're not going to edit this out on purpose. Alina, we're about to take off. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I guess we got to cut. Captain saying we're leaving. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate you.